Okay, so pretty interesting thing. So Cursor AI, there's a pull request for Cursor, cursor AI O stuff for React OS. So React OS is getting AI help now, according to this pull request that was merged. So the pull request introduces several configuration files to standardize coding styles, editor settings, and project-specific settings for the React OS project. Most important changes include defining indentation, naming conventions, configuring editor behavior for C, C++, and specifying project paths and settings. So you've got the indentation definition, the coding style, line length, brace style, and naming convention for functions and variables. You've got the, let's see, configure editor settings, tab size indentation, white space, and file associations. And then the settings, let's see, specify language standard, project type standards, warnings, formatters, linters, coding style. Paths for source include docs, tests, and build directories. Let's see. So this is same person up here. The cost of AI in large projects is prohibitive for the poor. The rich can afford rich development. Okay, so this is the same person introducing it. And then like all the pull requests and stuff. So then it was merged by this person. And then someone else comes in. Was this PR proof by the other devs? Did we decide anything about that during meeting or the develop in on the developer channel in Mattermost? I'm not aware of any of that. And then what does like AI, what does this have to do with the PR at all? Um, it does seem weird and out of place, but yeah. How is this even approved with all the issues attributed to AI, such as lack of license at, and attribution information, or the fact that AI produces terrible code? There should really be rules against AI and AI application settings being in React OS. As you can see, the PR was merged without any reviews or approvals. So this is an example of a contributor take particularly someone that looks like they're a maintainer just taking and doing what they want and adding stuff in for their own benefit possibly without consulting everyone else it looks like because you've got one two three other, well two other people that have chimed in and said hey what's going on here um well th three Four, yeah, like four people that have chimed in like, hey, what's up? This is not right. <laughs> so, like, it's interesting that you get something like this. So, let's actually do some precursory things on what is being implemented. Okay, so, um, cursor... This is basically your code editor. Um, it looks like it's another Electron app, just like VS Code. I mean, I don't see much of a difference of like, hey, we're going to like do VS Code or NeoVim, and we're going to use AI in it. Anybody could be using AI in it already. This is just someone, it looks like, adding features for their own environment, and it's an app image, of course for Linux. Let's see. Downloads, Mac OS, Windows, Linux, do, 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 features. Okay, so you've got the agent. Cursor's agent mode can complete tasks end to end. It does this quickly while keeping programmers in the loop tried out by selecting agent and the composer. Use custom retrieval models. Cursor can understand a code base, reduces the need to manually add context, run commands, loop on error, loops on errors. <coughs> So it's basically, a, in some ways, a debugger. Cursor includes a powerful autocomplete that predicts your next edit. Once enabled, it is always on and will suggest edits to your code across multiple lines, taking into account your recent changes. So these are configurations for the editor with built-in AI. Again, you could implement these things in any old code editor that you're using, like NeoVim, but we have to use an Electron app and now we have to include the project files for my specific use case in the whole entire project, which seems really, really stupid that you as a contributor feel the need to include your, like, your one use case in 
for everything else everybody does. So now people have to download your configuration files to use your own thing. Okay, let's go back to the PR. Ba -ba -ba. Yeah, see? Um, and like what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven people have like thumbs down it, so we've got let me see. Eight. And nine people that have chimed in in this project that um, don't like it. Maybe more. Like, what's going on here? <laughs> so, I mean, it could reasonably re be removed from the React OS project, but there was really no need to add such a thing to it. Um, it, it's almost like you're doing vibe coding, but anyway, um, so obviously React OS, um, is our favorite Windows clone of your, it, let's see, contributing, opening Git pod. It's actually a pretty cool project. I really do like it. 0.4.15. Wow. You can see it's got that very Windows-like feel to it. And now somebody has decided we need to add pro like configuration files for one code editor so that I can use it in this particular project rather than adding it to like the git ignore and saving it yourself. We have to add it to everything that we do. So it's basically irrelevant to the project overall it's just this is my these are my settings and this is what i want and i mean we see it for other editors it looks like too so i guess that's fair but still you're basically forcing everyone else to download your configurations for things but yeah um react os is getting ai help in one of the developers apparently let's see how many can do we have 284? Yeah. If it wasn't discussed otherwise, it obviously hasn't been pulled pulled out yet or removed from the code base. So, but it's only been about a month. So we'll see what happens. If you liked the content, if you enjoyed it, if you think I deserve it, like, comment, subscribe, leave any criticisms you have or what have you. I appreciate it. Feed that algorithm. Like I said, and I will see you guys in the next one.